today we are going to start a new chapter from english text this chapter number 4 the radio signal first i want to tell you what is radio signal radio signal is where we use radio waves to send our message to transmit our message from one place to another place this is an imaginary story here is its play you will learn how John plays the main character of this story. This play, how he helped his father. He is just memorizing his childhood memories, and in this story, he is only talking to his father and memorizing. It's an imaginary story. So we will read in this story what happened with John Gray and his father. So let's begin. Chapter four, radio signal. What are you doing, Sam? I am sending a signal to eight pens. Two pens here talking. One is asking, "What are you doing, Sam?" Then it says, "Then she is saying, I am sending a signal to eight pens." Ha ha ha! Are you crazy? No, Mike. Some might be, someone might be listening. John Gray helped his dad like this. Let's read the story together. There are six characters in this story. First is John Gray is the main character, the protagonist of this play. Connor Gray, John Gray's father. Molly Gray, John Gray's mother. Derek Roy is Molly Gray's friend. William Brown and Austin, Austin Frog. They are victims. Austin Frog is victim, and William Brown is another victim in this play. So let's begin. John pushed the door open. It cracked loudly. The dustbin hinge, growing at the door, swung backwards. John hadn't visited his parents' house since he, his dad had died. From that time onwards, the house had been boarded up and closed. He felt a pain in his stomach as childhood memories came flooding back. And this what happened. John just pushed the door open. He cracked loudly. It cracked loudly. What cracked loudly? The door. Because after the death of his father, he didn't enter in his parents' house. And as he entered there, the door is cracked out, and the rusty hinge groaning. Hinges, rusty hinge is groaning as the door swings backwards. As as the door is swinging backward, some sound is coming out from that door. John had to visit his parents' house since his dad had died. From that time onward, the house had been boarded up and closed. From that time, the house is closed. The house is closed. He felt a pain in his stomach as childhood memories came flooding back. As he entered in, the, in his parents' house, in the old house, childhood memories were entering in his mind. He missed his dad more than anything. John especially missed spending time with him. Now he's missing his dad more than anything. He just especially what he's missing. He missed spending time with his father. His dad had been as his hero, and his hero had loved his work. His dad, his dad's enthusiasm for solving mysteries had motivated him to join the police department. He went to his dad's room and removed the dust sheet from the radio transmitter that his father had used when he was director general of the serious crime unit. What his father was doing? Father was the director general of serious crime unit. He entered in the room. His dad is his hero, and he followed his dad on his work. What work their his father is doing is inspiration for him. So as he entered in the room, he just uh, removed the dust sheet from the radio transmitter, what, which his father was using at the time of their work. He pushed the lever and was lost in child childhood reminiscences, memories, memories. Then, as he pushed the lever, he went. He lost. He was lost in childhood memories. When suddenly he heard a voice start, he looked around. There was nobody there. And as he pushed the lever of the transmitter, he heard some sound and he was searching that who is there. But 
he found that nobody is there. He's just going, he's lost his mind in childhood memories, right? Now what happened? John went to himself. Now he's talking to himself. I am hallucinating. I can hear that voice in this room. Hallucinating means so. What is the meaning of hallucinating? Experiencing something which is actually not present. So he's just imagining which is not actually present there and he's thinking I am hallucinating. I can hear that's voice. In actual his dad is not his dad is not there, but he's just imagined imagining why at the other end of the video comes in. Is anyone there? The green buzzer is flashing over. From the other end of the transmitter, green buzzer is flashing over and boy is coming out that is said. But is there? John Clay. Who's there? Now John Clay is shocked. He's shocking and he just asks, Who's there? What do you want? Why is at the other end of the radio transmitter? Hello. Now you are audible. May I know with whom I am speaking? I am speaking. Over. And the other one is saying, Hello, now you are audible. May I know with whom I am talking? With whom I am speaking? John Gray, wow, it's a still operational. Now he is surprising. He is in surprise that the transmitter after a long time still the transmitter is operational. That means still it is working. Voice at the other hand of the radio transmitter, hello. This is corner gateway here. May I know with whom I am speaking over? Then he is saying, from the other side, the person is saying, I am corner gray. And may I know to whom I am talking? John Gray was confused. What? Who? Could you repeat that over? Because Connor Gray was his father and he was dad and he was confused and how could it be possible that my father is talking from the other end of the transmitter? Then he again asked, could you repeat that? Then the voice again from the other side, this is Connor Gray, the director general of police crime branch. Can you hear me kid? This is urgent. I need to talk Austin Ford over. Then he said, yes, I am. This is Connor Gray from the side, the director general of the police crime branch. Can you hear me? He's asking to the John Gray. He's asking to John Gray. Can you hear me, kid? This is urgent. I want to talk. From whom Connor Gray want to talk? Connor Gray want to talk to Austin Ford. John Gray. This must be a hot, hot call. I can hear you, sir. Please, sir. Please provide your real identity so that I can help you. Over. That means hot means prank call. Now he's thinking it must be a prank call for me. Now he said, can I can hear you, sir? I can hear you, but please, can you tell me your real identity so I can help you out? Connor Gray. My name is Connor Gray. Over. John Gray again in confused that, but how is this possible? How is this possible? Connor Gray, are you okay, kid? Did you say that? Aren't you Austin Ford? Over. And Connor Gray want to talk with Austin, and he said, Aren't you Austin? Are you okay, kid? You are saying that to me? Connor Gray now again is confused. Negative. How could your name be Connor Gray? Over. Then again he is in still the situation of confusion. He is saying, how could your name be Connor Gray? Connor Gray, what are you talking about kid? Can you tell me whether Austin or the killer? It's important over. Then he said, Connor Gray said, can, can you tell me whether Austin Gray or the killer? Where is the killer? I want to know about the killer. It's urgent. It's important. Wait. What John Gray said, wait a minute. It's a conversation between John Gray and Connor Gray. Now John Gray is saying, wait a minute. Are you talking about Austin Ford, the Director General of the Crime Branch Department? Over. Now he's asking, are you talking about Austin, who is the Director General of the Crime Branch Department? And Connor Gray, again he's the question, when? When did he become the Director General of the Crime Branch? When Austin became the Director General of Crime Branch, John Gray said, A long time ago, you are confusing me, sir. Please let me know your real identity. Now again, John.
John Gray was in still his confusion is not removed. Still he is in state of confusion and he is asking, you are confusing me sir, please tell me your real identity. To whom he is asking? To Connor Gray. Connor Gray, kids, we are not playing games. This is urgent. My name is Connor Gray, Director General of Police Crime Branch. Do you know anything about Austin Court? I'm the killer over. Then he asks, listen, we are not playing game. It's not joke. I just urgent. I want to know about Austin. If you know about the Austin and killer, then tell me their information over. John Gray, are you sure your name is Connor Gray? But how is this possible? My dad is there. Over. And he is again saying, Are you sure your name is Connor Gray? How is this possible? Because my dad was dead. Connor Gray, are you okay, kid? Did you say that? What are you talking about? May I know your name? Over. Then Connor Gray asked to John Gray, Did you say you are saying that to me? Now you tell me your name. I want to know your name. After that, what happened? John Gray. Reply, this is unbelievable, unbelievable that my name is John Gray, Johnny, the Deputy General of Police Crime Branch. Over. Then he explained about himself. There was silence for a minute. Now what happened? As Connor Gay heard that he is John Gray and is working in the police, depart police department and crime branch, so both and were silent. They both were in still of the state of confusion because John Gray was thinking that how can it be possible that the other end who is talking at the other end was his dad because his dad is died and now Connor Gray was also in state of confusion. How can it be possible that I am talking to my son? Connor Gray, John Gray, Johnny, how is this possible? My son is only 10 years old. He is playing in the backyard. And I am alive. Please acquaint me with your real identity, kid. You are terrifying me now. Over. Now what happened? Connor Gray is saying, how is this possible? Because my son is only 10 years old and he is playing at the, in the backyard. And I am still alive and you are saying that I was dead. Please tell me your real identity. Now John Gray explained that what happened. Hmm, my name is John Gray. Connor Gray and Molly Gray's only son. I was born on 23rd April 1950. You and mom used to call me Johnny. We live in 100 Queen Street, Steedle, Skelk. I miss you that over. Connor Gray, oh my god, how good is this possible, Johnny? Johnny and Molly are here in front of my eyes. They, what's the date? Over. Now, after listening, Connor Gray is asking, okay, just tell me what's the date, how it is possible because John Gray is here and Molly Gray is here with me, they are still in front of my eyes. Now John Gray is saying, 20, 20th January 1975, Monday, that you died in 1960 in an encounter attack. So it's 15 years back you died in an encounter attack, you were working on a serial killer project. It's almost 15 years since I have heard your voice. I love you, Dad. Over oh, now, he's feeling, he's expressing his feeling towards his father and saying, I love you, Dad, and explaining everything and telling about the date and his death, about his death. Suddenly, Molly and Johnny came into the room. Molly was unaccustomed accustomed to Connor talking about his family doing work. As Molly heard that Connor is talking about the family during the work, he was also surprised because before it doesn't happen when the time of the work, he didn't talk about his family in between. Molly Gray interrupted softly, Who is there here? Are you talking to someone about us? Who is there to whom you are talking? Are you talking about us? Connor Gray saying, Yes, dear, come here and meet John. He is the Deputy General of Police Crime Branch. He is the youngest officer ever to hold this position. Okay, then he explained, yes dear, you come and meet with Johnny. He is the deputy general of the police crime branch. He is the youngest officer in this position. 
Molly Wow. Hey, my son's name is John too. Congratulations, kid. You are doing a great job. Over. John Ray with that eyes. Yes, I know. Now see mom. He want to say mom here, but after this he just stop and say ma'am. Yes, I know ma'am. How are you and John? Over. Now between whom John Gray and Molly Gray is between the conversation started between John Gray and Molly Gray. Thank you, kid. I am good. How are you doing? Over. John Gray is replying. I am also fine, ma'am. Thank you. Over. Now John Gray, what he say? What she saying? Meet my son, Johnny. Johnny playing with the lever. Hi, John. My name is John Gray. I'm ten years old. Over. John Gray smiling. Hello, Johnny. How are you doing? Did you win the football game? Now John Gray is asking about the football game because he is talking to himself. This is an imaginary story. He is imagining. Imagine that he is talking to himself only, and we know that John loves to play football. So he is asking the question about the football match. John is that he know about my football game. And John is saying to Connor Gray that how he come to know about my football game. Connor Gray saying yes, champ. Reply to him first. First you reply to him only. John is saying the final match is tomorrow. I hope we will win. Over. John Gray, remember to kick the ball, kick, kick the ball to the left of the goalkeeper in the left last five minutes of the game, and you will score the winning goal. Over. Now John Gray is saying, giving some tricks to Johnny how to play football. Johnny, really, thank you for your suggestion. John, bye. Over and out. Now John Gray. All the best. Bye. Over and out. Molly Gray saying them. All the best to you too, John. Bye for now. Over and out. Now John Gray is smiling. It was nice talking to you again. He won't say mom, but what he has to say ma'am because Molly Gray doesn't know every uh, what the matter is going between them. Take care yourself. Good luck, Johnny. Over and out. Again, John be confused. I just talk to myself. How is this possible that I just talk to myself? This is insane. Insane. It's shocking. It's very shocking. How can I talk to myself? What is happening, Dad? How is this possible? How could I talk to you and Mom? And he say, How is this possible? How could I talk to you and Mom? Over. Call a break. I really don't know, Chan. Now listen to me carefully. If the current year is 1975, then you can help me with the serial killer case. Search through the previous files and find out the killer's name. Meet me tomorrow. Over. Then Connor Gray said, I don't know about this, but if the current year is 75, 1975, then you can help me to find out the killer. If you can help me in this serial, in this serial killer case. Search through the previous files and find out the killer's name and meet him tomorrow. Then John Gray is saying, Okay, Dad, I will search through the files over. Connor Gray, good. All the best, John. Bye. Over and out. John Gray, Dad, I hope that I will be able to hear you soon. Over. Connor Gray, don't be sad, Chen. We will definitely talk tomorrow. Be positive. Over and out. Okay, Dad. Over and out. Then John Connor they said, Okay, definitely we will talk tomorrow. Be positive. John went to his office immediately and searched through the files. After two hours, he found the killer's name. Then he went back to his parents' house and slept in the basement. The following morning, he woke from a troubled dream. He ran to the radio transmitter. The dream buzzer was flashing. As he searched and he found, found the name of the killer and he slept in the basement of the same with his parents' house. Then in the morning he just ran towards the room, his dad's room. What happened there? The green buzzer was flashing. John Gray started talking to his dad. Dad, I found him. I found him. He was Derek. Derek Roy is the serial killer and the next victim is William Brown.
Brown over the same victim is William Brown and the Derek Roy was a serial killer. Another one, what? Derek Roy? How is this possible? No, how is this possible? How can Derek Roy is a serial killer? John Gray, Dad, are you there? Who is Derek Roy? He killed William Brown in later penthouse apartment in 10th July 1960 around 1.30 a.m. over then he said that who is Derek Roy? He is a killer. He killed William Brown in later lettuce penthouse apartment on 10th July 1960 around 1.30 a.m. Connor Gray, tomorrow are you sure kid? Over. Positive dad, over. Then daughter Derek Roy is Molly's friend. What Connor Gray says? Derek Roy is Molly's friend and he is coming over to dinner tonight. What should I do now? Should I ask him about William Brown? Over. Then he said to John Gray that Derek Roy was Molly Gray's friend and he is coming over to dinner night tonight. Should I ask to him about William Brown? No, Dad, it's too dangerous. He will not admit you. You will be in trouble. He is a serial killer. Over. And he said, No, don't ask him. He will not admit you. He will not admit it. And he, you will also be in trouble. Then Connor Gray said, Yes, you are right, kid. But we have to do something soon. We don't have time. Over. Then he said, But we have to do something fast because we don't have time. John Gray said that you can stop the serial killer. You just have to find William Brown. We know the crime location. We can catch him there and it over. Then he said that you can stop the serial killer. You just have to find William Brown. We know the crime location. We know the crime location and we can caught him there and corner it. Super kid, you have turned out to be a fine officer. I'm proud of you, Chen. Over. Then he said, Yes, superb. You are giving me the great idea. You have turned out to be a fine officer now. You are a fine officer. I am proud of you. John Gray, that we will overcome the serial killer and I will not lose you again. What do you mean, Johnny? Over. John Gray, that I told you that you were killed in an encounter. Apparently, you were killed confronting Derek Roy. Then he said that now I don't want to miss you. Now I don't want to lose you again. Because as I told you, you were killed in an encounter attack. And maybe this is the same attack you are confronting Derek Roy at that time. What? This is contagious. Now again, this is very shocking for Connor Gray. John Gray softly that you have to be vigilant. He can prevent you. After all, he is a serial killer. Just follow the plan. That's the only way that you will be able to map him over. Then he said that you have to be vigilant. Means you have to be very careful towards Derek Roy. Because he can prevent you. He can give you, cheat you. After all, he is a serial killer. And you just have to follow the same plan what we made to arrest him. Then Connor they said, yes, I will be watchful, but I promise you that I will put him behind the bars for his crime and we will live together. Derek Roy, good evening. Connor, how are you doing? Connor Gray, Derek. Now what happened the entry of Derek Roy? Because Derek Roy was coming for the dinner in their house. Then the story will stop here. John Gray, Dad, Dad, are you there? Now John Gray is asking, Dad, Dad, are you there? Here what happened, this is an imaginary story. Father and the son, they both were talking. There is a conversation between them. Now here the story is ended. Now you have to complete this story. Because for you, you just try and imagine that what happened in the last and the end of the story. Thank you.